gig. And yeah, and, and we're doing and our own films. But I mean, the, our, our own films are labors of love that, you know, so put us... You work both professionally in animation on other things as well as your personal animation projects. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah, I just designed uh, an art review series, uh, a pilot for PBS called Artopia, and it's a show for children to learn about art and the history of art. And it's, uh, it's, it's, I just got the DVD um, of, the, of the first cut uh, the other day, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. And it's very nice. My new system. So Please. you have much more integrity than I do. <laughs> <laughs> How does one get a job at the National Film Board? Uh, so, uh, I don't do I don't do animation or illustration. I I I, I started interning for free with them, like while I was a student. So uh, and then after a while, I said you should you should pay me too. And so they, they started paying me. And what do you do? Oh, I'm, I'm the editor of the website. <laughs> we're, we're actually, quick plug, we have a new, uh, it's called beta.nfb.ca. We're putting all the NFB films online for free, like 50 years ago. Awesome documentaries, animate, animated films, and it's a really inspiring site. I'm really proud of work on. That's enough NFB talk. Okay. <laughs> they have their own marketing budget. <laughs> That was, yeah, I think actually, we should uh, get through everyone here, uh, the educational background that uh, one can, one has, and how useful it is for what you're doing now. Um, so what did you do? What did we do? Uh, uh, what did we do? Some art school, painting, and some animation school. So, um, Sheridan uh, College did for animation uh, back a decade ago, and uh, before that, University of Manitoba for painting and for drawing. But some, you know. I, oh. I actually did a, a politics degree at McMaster, but I was the editorial illustrator while I was. I, I did like political cartoons and editorial illustration while I was there, and then have always done like freelance illustration on the side while I'm, you know, washing dishes or whatever. Please. Yes, a uh, question as to content, because uh, the books have circulated out, people have seen that. Where are these images coming from? What, are the, what, what is the background here? Um, the images, well, I guess what I would like to stress is that, like, they're not, uh, this, this is from uh, my work, it's, it's part of, it's, it's immigrant uh, art. So I'm a Czech who grew up in Canada, mostly, and so it's it's sort of my influences from Western comics and the stuff I was really into growing up uh, in Winnipeg and the Czech culture that I had in my home. Uh, a lot of the Czech uh, characters are these, these standard fairy tale characters, the devil, um, well, the, the Vodnik, a Vodnik is a, is a, is a, a water spirit, Orusalka, again, she's like a, 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 like water sprite who lures men to their deaths. Um, uh, Hasterman is also is just like a, 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 a malicious spirit from the forest. And um, yeah, and I've been like, since I grew up, since I've known these characters ever since I was uh, a kid, I've sort of internalized them, and so when I sit down and draw, I usually draw these folk characters just like absent-mindedly, and I think that they're more about um, expressing other 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 ideas and, and subconscious, I think, uh, themes than being literally representative of, of these traditional characters. I hope that wasn't too rambling. With any traditional character, there must be dozens of artist representations in the, around you. You mentioned all the avant-garde artists. There, you would have encountered many different takes on these Ex characters growing up. Yes, many different takes. Predominantly, uh, uh, artist uh, named Josef Lada, who is like he's like the um, a national artist of the Czech Republic. If you ever go visit Prague, and I recommend it, it's a beautiful country and a beautiful city. Um, you'll see everywhere. You'll see uh, work that looks sort of like naive folk art, but, but 
but as if it was composed by Max Beckman or, or Picasso. And this is Josef Lada. He's, he's mostly well known in, uh, in North America as the illustrator for The Good Soldier Schweik by uh, uh, Jaroslav Hasek, which is a, a quite a famous novel about the First World War. Um, and uh, and this 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 uh, Josef Slada work is just like it's 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 integral to the Czech soul and everybody everybody in their homes all children grow up with this with this with this stylist and um, yeah so a lot of a lot of my sensibility is is from uh, Josef Slada's work. <laughs> I wanted to ask you what Western comics you were reading. You're saying in Winnipeg. In Winnipeg. Yeah. I, the standards, I mean, like being a huge uh, comic book fan, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, and then Crumb, and you know, underground comics, and just like. Uh, in terms of um, the work that I have in Puhaki, it's a little bit of different in terms of approach. Merrick, as you mentioned, had sort of um, uh, integrated the Czech folklore into his very being. But whereas myself, I've had to go back and actually study Ukrainian iconography because I grew up in Canada and I'm surrounded by these images, but I didn't really know what they meant. So I actually had to go back, and, and I'm still in that process now, and study the iconography and, and learn and relearn really uh, what the symbolism meant. And through that, actually, it's, it's fantastic because the symbolism, um, it's, it's kind of like native religion. It's very like earth worshiping and um, spirits uh, earth spirits are personified, and trees are personified, all of nature is personified basically. Um, which is, is fantastic because for someone who's really into environmentalism, which is myself, this, this fits so well with my, my political viewpoints. So kind of going back and studying the Ukrainian symbolism, it works so well for me at two levels as an artist and as a sort of a political stance. Um, and so, uh, in looking at a lot of at the, your symbols in the book, there's a certain uh, sort of geometric beauty to them that one could be attracted to that artwork before one knows what it meant, and then afterwards. Is that the case that you already were attracted to these before you were learning the meaning of the? I was, yeah, definitely. I always admired the artwork and the cultural art, the folklore, um, the colors, and. Uh, and then some of the stuff too, I sort of um, took as starting points, and some of the designs aren't actually traditional Ukrainian designs. I've kind of expanded upon them. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful culture with beautiful kind of uh, picture graphs. More questions from the audience? Oh. Uh, there's stuff in your mini comics that is not in my and there's some stuff in the book that is. How do you decide what to and what to expand? Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, it was weird. Whoa. When I got back from Korea, I did a bunch of comics that I just absolutely hated. And uh, yeah. I, I had to, I just edited yeah. them out because uh, yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, look at them anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then uh, I, I had a really, I had a long burst of work this spring when I was finishing the book. So that's the, that's the new stuff that you see. Uh, this the style that we're seeing of, of yours in the book. That's a style that uh, has developed over a very long time, or uh, it's something that do you work in? Do you work in a, in different styles? Or? Yeah, I do actually work in different styles, but um, it's not something I, I'm just easily influenced. I think by, by uh, you know whenever I see other work. But uh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm actually I feel now I'm a lot more focused than I was when I started the book. When I started the book, I was really all over the map stylistically. But uh, now I'm, I, I think I've found my sort of uh, home, you know, like what, found my feet. And, uh, and uh, when I sit down in front of it, it's fun. Now I sit down and I know how I'm going to approach things. It's, it's kind of liberating, ironically. Any other questions from the audience? Well, um, uh, I guess I, I will. Uh, I will ask one more. If we, you talked a little bit about comic influences, uh, you know, stuff you read growing up, uh, stuff you read in Korea. Um, but uh, are either of you, uh, are any of you, attracted to doing a sort of what would be considered a full-blown traditional comic? Uh, uh, something that uh, something that would be recognized by the average person as oh, that's you know that's a comic book as opposed to you know, a nice little art book or something like that. Does, is that uh, is that something that attracts any any of you? 